Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to go over punctuation rules generally involving apostrophes, semicolons, and commas. In addition to discussing the appropriate uses of these various different punctuation marks, we're also going to talk about some of the common errors that I see in students' essays that you can try to avoid by following the advice in this video. The first punctuation mark we're going to talk about is the comma. There are four uses for the comma. The comma can be used alongside a coordinating conjunction such as for, and, nor, but, yet, or so to transition between two independent clauses. As an example, William Blake's poem celebrates innocence, but the children's work is horrible. So we have two independent clauses. William Blake's poem celebrates innocence, and also the, the independent clause, the children's work is still horrible. Both independent clauses, as independent clauses, have um, a subject and a main verb, a properly conjugated verb, and they are joined together with a coordinating conjunction and a comma. Now, you can only use a comma on both sides of the conjunction if you have an independent clause on either side. On either side, in other words, you can't have a dependent clause begun with a coordinating conjunction. So, examples of independent clauses here. The next use of a uh, comma would be a tra to transition from a dependent clause to an independent clause. So as an example, we have the subordinating clause or the subordinating conjunction rather when. When she looks outside, Louise feels supremely confident. After we finish supper, I will go to the store. Note that you only have to use a comma here if the dependent clause begins a sentence. You could have the sentence, I will go to the store after we finish supper. In that case, you wouldn't have a comma. So if the dependent clause comes before the independent clause, you have a comma. If not, you don't have a comma. So examples of that. Use a comma to transition to and from parenthetical information and introductory phrases. After supper, Sally fell asleep. Jane, who owns her own business, does not like it when others try to control her. So here, you have an explanatory phrase attached to Jane, and you indicate that it is a separate phrase. It's almost like saying that that phrase could be taken out without changing the actual meaning of the sentence. It adds additional information, and it is offset by those commas. Daryl's car, which was bright red, impressed a few people. Again, the sentence could make sense if you removed that phrase offset by commas. That phrase only adds more information. And it's indicated as such by using those commas to, to offset it in a grammatically correct fashion following the rules for clauses and phrases that we've discussed in earlier videos. Next, you can use commas to transition between three or more items in a list or series. So the poem is written with a youthful, innocent, and imaginative tone. In order to pass the final exam, so dependent clause attached to an independent clause using a comma, Students will need to be familiar with the poems, the plays, and grammar rules. Three items in a list, offset by commas. The apostrophe. There are two and only two uses for the apostrophe. A word, I will say, is never made plural using an apostrophe. So you never use an apostrophe to pluralize a word. The apostrophe takes the place of a missing letter when a contraction is used. A contraction is formed by combining two words. Remember, though, that you can never use contractions in the context of an English essay. So this use of the apostrophe is probably not going to be relevant to you. I am sleepy, I'm sleepy, etc. Formal academic writing should not use contractions. Therefore, the only apostrophes in your essay should be based on the next rule. The apostrophe, along with an S, is used to indicate possession to show that one noun belongs to another. The hope of the little girl becomes the little girl's hope. When the noun already ends in an S, you add an apostrophe to it. Common apostrophe errors. The apostrophe is never used to pluralize a word. Keep that in mind. Never confuse its and its, or there and there. One of the tricks is, well, if you're not using contractions, then you can't possibly make the mistake of its versus its. Its is a contraction for it is. So write out it is. So it is so. It is unfair that uh, Jerry should have to go through this rite of passage to feel like he's a man, etc., etc. Its is a pronoun indicating possession. So the car's paint job, its paint job. It's like his or hers. 
it indicates that the object possesses something. There, they apostrophe re is a contraction of they are. So they're happy, they are happy. There, T-H-E-I-R, is a pronoun indicating that a noun belongs to their, to they, excuse me. So their car, their paint job, etc. So incorrect usages of these kinds of words, these commonly confused terms. The store is very kind to all of its customers, I-T apostrophe S. That literally means the store is very kind to all of it is customers. What they mean is its customers. ITS, no apostrophe. A ring is a symbol. It's used to represent Aunt Jennifer's marriage. So ITS, no, that means something owns used to represent, or it owns used to represent. Makes no sense. It is used to represent Annie's, Aunt Jenny's marriage. The daughters love their mother. So that literally means that the daughter's love is their mother. What is really meant is that the daughters love their, T-H-E-I-R, the possessive form, their mother. Flaws are found in all the characters from the play. They're, they are, they're very realistic. Already I'm stumbling over it because I can see that word and instinctively I know that's horribly wrong. I've got to stop here and correct that. But uh, they're very realistic really should be they are very realistic. Never use an apostrophe on a verb or on a noun that is the subject or object of a verb. In other words, the cats became crazy when the spaceships arrived. You never pluralize using an apostrophe. Joyce portrays the intense and dramatic emotions of a young man. That's literally saying that, I guess, of a young man belongs to the emotions. That doesn't make any sense. The syntax of the sentence is completely off because of the grammatical error, the incorrect use of an apostrophe here. Or Iago's major skill, that's fine, is how he sees the weaknesses in others. It makes no sense. It sees apostrophe, see own something? No. The semicolon. There are only two uses for the semicolon, and the semicolon is a tricky beast to actually master because you have the literal objective rules for its use. However, you also have a kind of artistry in the way in which it's supposed to be used to balance different aspects of the sentence. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. There are two uses for the semicolon. You can use a semicolon to connect two complete thoughts, that is two independent clauses. So it works in that sense like a period. They're closely related, but not connected by a coordinator subordinated conjunction. And that's the rub, that they are closely related. So when you're writing your essay and you use the semicolon, the use of the semicolon indicates to your reader that the two sentences are related or the ideas in the two sentences are somehow connected, more connected than would be implied by a period. All of the animals are gathering at the raccoon's house. The party is about to start. So the fact that they are all gathering at the raccoon's house, I guess this is like the raccoons, that cartoon show from back in my childhood, um, the party is about to start. What you have here are two ideas. The party is about to start, well, because all of the animals have arrived or all of the animals have arrived because the party is going to start. The ideas themselves are connected. There's a interrelationship between them and that's indicated to us by the use of the semicolon as opposed to a period. You could have a period here, it would both be grammatically correct because you would be separating it out with two, you'd be separating out two independent clauses with a period. Both are grammatically correct, but the semicolon implies relationship between the two ideas. Ulysses feels bored and unsatisfied as a king. His personality does not match a static position in life. Same thing. The semicolon here holds the same grammatical weight as a period. It serves the same function as a period. Use the semicolon to separate items in a list when the items themselves contain commas. So if you are sort of getting jumbled up with the number of commas that you have or the length of entries in a list inside one of your sentences, you can use semicolons to separate them out more clearly. The members of Radiohead are Johnny Greenwood, who plays guitar, Tom York, who sings, Ed O'Brien, who plays guitar, Phil Selway, who plays drums, and Colin Greenway, who plays bass. Note that we're separating out the items in a list using semicolons rather than commas, and we do so because it could get very confusing if each of these semicolons was a comma. I mean, just look at the sentence that results if we switch those semicolons for commas. 
it would almost be like who plays guitar and who sings are part of the list of, of people who are being listed off. So the sentence becomes confused. The members of Radiohead are John Greenway, who plays guitar, Tom Thorne, who sings, Ed O'Brien, who plays guitar, Phil Sweeney, who plays drums, and Colin Greenway, who plays bass. It's difficult to follow. So we would replace those commas with semicolons to make it clear what we're itemizing in the list, because in each item in that list, we already have a comma. We don't want confusion between the kind of the phrase that's giving you more information about somebody like John Greenway and the item in the list, John Greenway who plays guitar. Common semicolon errors. Never use a semicolon unless you have a complete independent clause on both sides of the semicolon. So Jane feels amazing when she sleeps, dreaming about eggs benedict. Dreaming about eggs benedict is not a clause. I mean, it's not a complete thought. It's not an independent clause. So you need the comma there. The speaker argues that his mistress is special, despite not being perfect. Despite not being perfect is not a complete thought. It's not an independent clause, so it can't be separated by a semicolon. Be barely aware of the monster, the hero bragged loudly and stupidly. If we put in a period there, which can replace the semicolon, in the context of uh, separating independent clauses at least, barely aware of the monster is a sentence fragment. It's not a complete thought. There's no subject in that sentence. The dash. There is only one use for the dash. A dash is used to introduce interrupting ideas in a sentence. We can use a dash in order to give special attention to words and phrases that disrupt the basic grammar of a sentence. And what I'll say is that the dash is preferable to parenthetical comments. So rather than putting a thought in parentheses, right, use dashes. Every member of the family, even the children, loves watching the news. So the, the uh, dash introduces a point that describes or adds more information to the sentence, interrupting the grammatical flow of it. Now, technically, you might be tempted to use, like I said, brackets. But the better way of approaching this kind of parenthetical aside is the use of the dash. Shakespeare presents Othello, a play full of easily avoided miscommunication, as a frustrating tale of tragedy. The introduction is really solid, straightforward to the point, and expressing all the required steps. So you don't need to bracket off the explanatory phrase in dashes. Sometimes if the, the sentence continues on, you might just have the dash that introduces that aside or that side comment, and you end the sentence with that. She lies with Cassio. Zunes, that's fulsome. Handkerchief, confessions, handkerchief. Same use of the dash to indicate that these portions of the sentence are offset. Note, while they should not be overused, dashes allow you to incorporate fragments into sentences. Dashes are a strong stylistic tool that, to add emphasis to certain ideas in your writing. Dashes can be created by putting in two hyphens in most word processing software. So there are four punctuation marks or four types of punctuation that you could include in your essay and a number of issues that arise through the improper uh, use of those punctuation marks.